This video is going to cover some of the more important websites when it comes to hacking. The frac.org electronic magazine has been around for decades. The articles featured here are unmatched due to the editor's regard for high quality. The first issue came out in 1985 and the most recent e-zine was released in 2021. The site is a great place to go for a taste of real hacker culture. It has a heavy focus on the raw information being presented, with only the best article submissions being chosen. There are some great interviews here as well as more than a handful of no-nonsense technical papers. At the time of this video, there are 70 issues on FRAC. The 2600 Quarterly is another fantastic window into authentic hacker culture. Its HQ is in New York. The magazine is physically printed, making each copy extremely collectible. I've read outstanding articles in 2600 about everything from hacking traffic lights to building burner phones from scratch. Also, the magazine's creator hosts a hacker convention called Hackers on Planet Earth in New York City. Most of the magazine is composed of articles written and submitted by its readers, and there are always interesting advertisements from fellow readers in the back. Hack the Box is arguably the best site for practicing your skills. To earn points, you progress through challenges. Each challenge has a difficulty ranging from easy to very hard. You beat the challenge by finding the flag which is stored somewhere on the vulnerable box. Each box is a computer which has an IP that is accessible by connecting to the unique Hack the Box VPNs. You scan the IP to find vulnerable services running on the target. Another benefit to playing Hack the Box is how companies hire through it. The site has a job openings page where third-party organizations recruit players. For example, one position listing you might see is a security operations center role. Hiring companies come to Hack the Box to find quality talent. Try Hack Me is similar to Hack the Box, being that there is a point system and a gamified experience. However, it is more geared toward beginners and intermediate hackers as it does a good job of holding the user's hand through each challenge room. Walkthroughs are provided and as you complete each CTF, you are allowed to view these walkthroughs if you need help or a hint. Just like Hack the Box, there is a paid version that contains upgraded features such as premium Microsoft Windows rooms. There are over 500 rooms approximately 350 of which are totally free. There are also learning paths you can choose to complete if you are just starting out and are not sure where to begin. Finally, TryHackMe offers its own certifications that users can share on their resumes or LinkedIn profiles. The sheer amount of users and posts that the breach forums have is unmatched. It is an awesome place to bounce ideas off of other hackers. I found this community when I needed help on a certain Hack the Box challenge. There are many hacker-oriented forums elsewhere where script kiddies drown out the real quality posts of people who do indeed know how to code. This is not one of those places. There are so many active users at any given time that you are pretty much guaranteed your posts will be read and responded to. I should also add that while accessing this forum is not illegal, what you do with the information gathered on it sure could be. Remember to stay within the ethical bounds of your country's internet laws. Shodan is essentially a search engine for vulnerable machines. For example, I have used it in the past to find and access cameras that were part of the Internet of Things. The cameras which I was able to look through at someone's property had default passwords. Shodan is simply a massive port scanner. It helps us by finding open devices which are online and the services that are running on that device's ports. To quote the website, Shodan crawls the entire internet weekly. It displays general information about an IP, web technologies running on it, such as Bootstrap and MySQL, and known vulnerabilities for what's on each port. There's even an application programming interface if you would like your program to use any of Shodan's features. HackerOne is most known for its bug bounty programs. Cybersecurity researchers are given a scope of attack which encompasses all the domains that make up what a certain company needs secured. Companies come to HackerOne expecting their websites to become vulnerability proof. This is done through the bug bounty program. Hackers of various skill sets 
and levels use tools like Burp Suite to test a website for bugs. If a bug is found that leads to a critical security hole, the hacker is paid more money if he or she um, explains how it leads to a severe security flaw. During a bug bounty program, hundreds of bugs may be found. Hackers are usually paid more also if they submit a detailed explanation of how the bug works and how to go about fixing it. Companies typically shell out thousands of dollars in bug bounty programs. SecurityTube is a resource that has been around for about a decade and is still largely unknown. Despite this, the content on the site remains relevant. There are some worthwhile classes available for researchers to take, such as the course on assembly language and the one on Metasploit. Besides these, there are loads of other free videos on information security topics. Although the most recent videos were posted a few years ago, this does not matter because they are on topics that have not changed at all, such as on assembly language. Cybrary is by far the best resource in terms of courses. There are about a dozen career track learning paths. For example, there's a grouping of 80 hours worth of videos and labs that help the students get prepared to be a level one security operations center analyst. Another example is the system administrator path, which will get you prepared for a job with 130 hours of material. There are even classes that are designed specifically to prepare you for certification exams like the CompTIA, Security Plus, and more. To get access to the entire website, you only have to pay about $60 a month. Aside from all the industry standard certifications that hiring companies love to see, Cyber has its own certificates also, which are great for your LinkedIn page. Cyberry's labs are made possible by virtual machines and typically show how a cyber attack happens by giving the user access to multiple VMs at the same time. And to conclude, I did complete the entire SOC Analyst 1 career path if you have any questions about it. Reddit has a plethora of cybersecurity communities. Some of the subreddits include, but are not limited to, the following. Cybersecurity, Hacking, NetSec, InfoSec, Pwned, Reverse Engineering, and Security CTF, just to name a few. The best part of joining any of these cybersecurity communities is that you will easily be able to stay up to date. If I worked at a job in the field of information security, I would make sure to subscribe to each of the previously mentioned subreddits, and then checking the most recent posts in my daily feed would be akin to something like reading a morning newspaper. Nothing really goes unnoticed to Reddit's hacking community at large, which is important because something is always new in information security. If you are in the field, it's crucial to stay up to date. A few of these cybersecurity subreddits, such as the reverse engineering one, even do have hiring threads, which are updated regularly. It's no coincidence that companies trust this website when it comes to sourcing real hacking talent. Live Overflow is by far the best YouTube channel that features advanced hacking. Each video has a solid, informative commentary that is unique and easy to digest. Topics range from bug bounty explanations to descriptions of how to solve CTFs. If there is a certain video you find helpful, chances are that Live Overflow has a whole playlist where they have other videos which relate. A particular place where Live Overflow shines would be his playlist with over 50 videos, and the playlist is called binary exploitation. There are also quality playlists on bug bounty, CTFs, and even Minecraft hacking, just to name a few of them. The creator of Live Overflow even has an article on Frack. My favorite videos other than the binary exploitation playlist of his are his videos on Google vulnerabilities, which are found in the bug bounty playlist. Finally, to give you an idea of how popular Live Overflow is, I'll mention that he has five videos with over a million views and three that are almost there. DEF CON and Black Hat are massive cybersecurity conventions that take place annually. Many of the lectures at these meetups end up being recorded and posted here on YouTube for the information security community to share and enjoy freely. It is common for companies within the industry to send their employees to these conventions to hang out, receive trainings, and network. 
There are hundreds of DEF CON and Black Hat presentations recorded and viewable on YouTube. The conventions are known for being attended by black, gray, and white hat hackers, and even federal agents. DEF CON and Black Hat both take place in Las Vegas, and Black Hat also has other locations internationally. DEF CON has been around since 1993, and Black Hat since 1997. DEF CON is more of a party, while Black Hat more of a business event. Both cover what seems to be like everything with amazing lectures. InfoSec Jobs is a fantastic resource if you are looking for a position in the field or if you just need to see what companies are looking for. There are thousands of opportunities which show up here on what is essentially a huge job board. You can tick boxes like remote if you need a job where you can work anywhere and you have options like setting the level of information security jobs shown to beginner, intermediate, or advanced. There are a bunch of other options too for each job classification such as incident response, pen testing, security engineering, forensics, analyst, and more. The best part is that the InfoSec job search engine usually picks up on opportunities that mainstream job searches like Google and Indeed do not. Not only that, but when I used InfoSec jobs, I applied for about a dozen jobs and was amazed that I got a response from each one over the next couple weeks. The Sands Institute has the highest quality courses of any resource on this list. However, it also happens to be the most expensive. Courses cost anywhere between $4,000 and $9,000, but luckily it is normal for the company you work for to pay for your Sands classes. The certificates awarded are a lot higher value than other online schools mentioned in this list. You get what you pay for in terms of quality. SAN stands for SysAdmin Audit Network and Security. It has been around since 1989 and as of 2021 it is the largest training organization. The faculty are industry professionals and experts. Courses are created by a collective group of information security professionals and cover defenses, pen testing, incident response, forensics, and auditing. Finally, I save the best for last. Hack 5 is a video series which mainly goes over news in the cybersecurity world through their show Threatwire, and in the main series they showcase their own awesome pen testing gadgets. These have come a long way since I purchased the Bluetooth sniffer device, the Ubertooth, back in 2013. Their tools are best for red teaming or attacking a network slash computer, and they specialize in a few different exploitation techniques, but mainly man in the middle attacks. These are where the potentially malicious attacker is able to intercept traffic between devices. For example, one is capable of sitting between a laptop and a router and getting access to whatever packets are sent, such as Facebook login information. This can be done with the laptop and Hack5's own Wi-Fi Pineapple device, which essentially mimics a router's behavior, putting the attacker in control. Aside from Wi-Fi pen testing, they also have devices for hot plug attacks, which are when a device like a USB stick is added while the system is still running. Hack5's USB rubber ducky looks just like a flash drive, but it, in but it injects keystrokes so you can exploit the target machine by just plugging it in. Finally, Hack5 also does a great job with their tutorials for each of their gadgets. Alright, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and if there's any videos you'd like to request that I make, please drop them in the comment below. Please check out my website, hackguru.tech, which is in the description below. If you found this video interesting, chances are you'll love the content on my site. Alright, thank you.